tremendous looking trophy. Hello, welcome to Platinum Explosion. I'm on PlayStation Podcast in the yes, yes. My name's Unblack. Joey, me. As always, Ashley Hodley. Hey, Dylan. Excited to be here, but I'll tell you what, I'll be more excited if this Friday Joseph Ferris comes up on stage and says, fuck Bobby Kotick. Right? Fuck Jeff Keel. No. <laughs> 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 what a swerve. How dare you not say <laughs> straight away, uh, yeah. like, fuck Activision. He just like throws his mic on the ground. He's like, and fuck Bobby Kotick too. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. my dream scenario is uh, Keanu Reeves comes out with a shirt that says five of you got a on it. Imagine. If of all people to do such a stand, it was the man himself. The one, some would say. The one. It's really the one. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about him in a minute, actually. So. Shout out. Uh, quick PSA, since we're coming into it. Uh, two more episodes after this one. Left of Platinum Explosion before we go on a three-week, I think it is, break. Uh, yeah. So we'll have next week's episode, and then I don't know what we'll be talking about next week. There's just regular. And then on the 22nd, the last one for the year, we'll be doing our... Um, the topic I've got down is, uh, like, hopes and dreams or what we hope PlayStation does in 2022 or, you know. However you, wa- however you want to word that is the... Oh, okay will be the topic so yeah two more Crush episodes after this one so lock in your uh if you have any i don't know if you've got questions for the final one of the year or something like that we could do that whatever you want to do but yes we are in december yes the game awards are this week yes the year's coming to a close yes there's still going to be plenty of stuff to do like our best of 2021 coverage of course including the best games and stuff which you can look forward to in early 2022 i think it's the second week or something um but yes all right let's get into this week's episode of the show though um let's just jump straight into it so playstation plus games for december the final month of 2021 have been revealed it's fucking interesting um so your games are as announced on the playstation blog Writes Adam Ryan at Well Played. Uh, we now know what games we'll be getting us through the festive season and into the new year. It was announced on the PlayStation blog that from December 7th, PlayStation Plus members will be able to download Godfall Challenger Edition, Lego DC Super Villains, and Mortal Shell. So, I mean, let's just get the easy ones out of the way. The Lego DC Super Villains was the last DC Lego game that released like two years ago, I think, something like that. A um, couple yep. years ago. So, that one. If you like Lego games, action packs, good good time. Jump into that. That's good. Mortal three shit. Years ago. Three years ago. Fucking hell. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, 2020 doesn't count. So I mean, came out a year ago, years. basically. Two years ago. Yeah. Whatever. Um, Mortal Shell is like a Souls like sort of thing, I guess, or whatever. Like Souls is fine. Dark Souls like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so if that sounds interesting, there you go. There are two options. One's like a hard game, the other one's a Lego game. And then we get to the interesting one, which is Godfall. You're like, oh, you know, Godfall. I've, I've actually wanted to play that. Maybe now I've got... Oh, yeah, play. remember that game? Wrong! That's what people are. You can't play it, Ash. You cannot play the fucking game. What? Wait, wait. But it says Godfall Challenger Edition. Yeah. That must be like a special edition of the game. So Includes like all the, the DLC. Plus all the DLC, right? Wrong. Wrong. What? They've decided to be cool and do it backwards, which is give away a version of the game on PlayStation Plus that only includes certain content and cuts out stuff instead of giving you one that uh, comes so stuff. that's why it's called Challenger Edition, because it's challenging to enjoy the game. Challenges you your, all of it. Challenges your wallet to be bothered to spend money to get the other stuff. Uh, so the Challenger Edition is void of the single-player narrative content, and instead it lets you play the end game content. The stuff that a lot of people don't care for unless Because <laughs> that's can... what everybody loves in video <laughs> games, isn't it? We just uh, plow right, through the campaign and story just stuff. to get to the end game stuff. Yeah, like, I don't know. What do you think this is an MMO? Anyway, it's one of the weirder things. So, yeah, I mean, that's obviously been a hot topic of discussion on sort of Twitter and whatever throughout the week. But, uh, yeah, I think it's dumb. I mean, I doubt you think it's good. <laughs> uh, no, it's not a great look. I mean... Uh, maybe they do PlayStation. It's like, yeah, we're going to give you Godfall. And they're like, yes, here's a stack of money. Like, haha, Challenger Edition. Uh, but it, it kind of doesn't make any sense why this is even a thing in the first place. It's like, why would you want people to play your only the trials and stuff version of your game? You know? It's so weird. Also, it's going to be the epic free game. 
starting from the 10th to the 17th of December. The real game? Prison Architect. The full game? No. The Challenger edition oh, okay, right. as well. So that, that means if they've timed it up with both, it means they've made this edition, literally gone to both companies, said, how much do I need to pay to get this on? And I hope to God it was like a quarter of the amount it would have been for the actual game. I mean, hopefully they didn't spend much money on this, you know, saving up, budgeting correctly so they could get bigger titles down. They're like, man, we we really need to get, how can we get people to play Godfall? I know, let's make people dislike the game even more, (laughs) like (laughs) like giving away a fucking edition. Let's give away the part that you get to play after you finish the game. You know, this is on. This is the sort of thing where you make this free. Like, if you're like really struggling and you want to sort of tr- attempt to bring up Godfall's player base, then give away this for free, and then like put it on the store. Like, not anyone on can PS get Plus, it. Just, not just, on PlayStation yeah. Plus. Like, just give just this free away. To play. Then that's fine. I would have no problem with it at that point. I'd be like, all right. So they they they're obviously trying to get a player base back in. Um, but yeah, PlayStation Plus is for full games, not for random editions you've made up to give away on. Epic and PlayStation, so that's dumb. This is dumb. Anyway, my pick of the month, Lego DC Super Villains. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got a playthrough. Yeah. Um, I've owned it since release. Haven't played it. So, uh, <laughs> that's a classic move. Uh, classic yeah, actually, no, I, luckily I don't buy too much of this. <laughs> Every now and then I... Well, the only stuff I end up buying that I never end up playing is it's always a Switch game. It's always like, I'll play this and then... Did you buy True Colors? Oh, that's true, yeah. Oh, you played like a... I played the first played chapter. chapter. Yeah. And definitely sure. played like two hours or whatever. Yeah. Love it. Anyway. Listen, I bought many a game that I've never played. <laughs> yeah. I've... <laughs> haven't we? I all? bought Judgment and I still haven't got around to playing it. What? Which coincidentally, apparently, is being released in Asian markets. As yeah. Part of it was on PlayStation Plus. I got excited for a hot minute. I saw it like on Twitter going around. I was like, yes, Judgment free. I'm good. like, fuck yes. That would have been a smart choice. Yeah. Lost Judgment's come out. I'm sure the sales aren't fantastic. So, you know, get people in the first game, then they might buy the second game. But no, they're fucked up. Well, I mean, releasing in Asia makes sense because that's probably where the biggest market is going to be. But, you know, our Australian and North American and European dollars count too. Yeah, I like to think Europeans so. don't have dollars. I like to think so. Polygon writes, Fortnite Chapter 3 brings a new map, Spider-Man and Web Swing. So, yep. Uh, Fortnite's new chapter has begun and brought with it a whole new map. Fortnite's overhaul of the island features several new locations, new weather effects and new weapons. It's still a big old Fortnite map, so it should still look familiar. The new island is tied closely to the season's battle pass, which primarily momentarily fucking up. I'm going to leave it as it. Uh, features Spider-Man. The rival of Marvel's Web Slinger has inspired his own location in the new map too. Among the largest Spider-Man references in Chapter 3 is the massive Daily Bugle office building. There are also other new areas like the Sanctuary, which serves as a base for the Seven, the secret organization behind some of the biggest events in the larger Fortnite narrative. Spider-Man also helped inspire one of Fortnite Chapter 3's new mechanics as well, swinging. Players will be able to swing from high places with Spider-Man's iconic web shooters starting on December 11th. The new season will also be the first to introduce sliding to Fortnite, but that seems a little less Spider-Man inspired. Um, also, The Rock was apparently in the game now, and that's a thing. Yeah, The Rock was the foundation. He's the head honcho behind everything or something is what I gathered. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you like Spider-Man and The Rock? Like, you playing Fortnite or what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I will say I'm excited for all our Xbox, all the Xbox fans out there. They finally have a game in which they can play Spider-Man in. I mean, no, that's true. Hey, did they have Ultimate Alliance? Did that? Okay. Two. A game release. One in and two. Recent years. I guess yeah. like XCOM, but uh, Capcom vs. Marvel three. Mm. That might have been the last one you could play mm. Spider-Man in. Hmm. Yeah. True. Nintendo Switch owners. Oh no, they had Marvel vs. They had um, Ultimate Alliance three like last year, I guess, or whenever it was. No, Ultimate Alliance three was exclusive to Switch. Yeah, so I mean, like Switch. Owners, I was about to say yeah. Switch owners only yeah, just got Spider Man, yeah, but Switch no, Switch owners, owners have had a new Spider Man game before Xbox owners. <laughs> <laughs> As they should. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's cool. You know, uh, I'm sure you know all the new ta- all the Fortnite fans are super happy. You know, it, interesting, interesting. The same around the same time that uh, you know, one of the biggest MMO. Expansion packs is about to drop. Mm-hmm. Season two of Fortnite drop. Mm-hmm. 
It's in three. Chapter ends. three. Chapter three begins. Interesting timing. Head to head, which one's going to be bigger? You know, it's one of those weird things, though. So two things are happening where, like, I just don't really care about either, but I'm aware they're happening, you know? So got all these people on Twitter, like, 10 million people are in a queue to get into Final Fantasy. I'm like, all right, that sounds like... Have we, have we heard from Kieran in the last couple of days? No, he's dead. Um, and then Fortnite, all these people are tweeting about the island flipping upside down. There was a press release sent through this morning where it was literally all just in backwards font. No, it was... I'm sorry, listen, I love the PR team, I like being creativity, <laughs> but you did it wrong. The, I, the idea behind it, I'm assuming, is you're meant to look at it upside down and it reads but you can't. correctly, like Spider-Man, yeah. but they've done it the wrong way, where they've written the text backwards backwards as well. So, you can't so if they had written the text forwards, mm. but upside down, then we would be... Luckily, there was, was a Spider-Man. document with the actual press release at the bottom. <laughs> Otherwise, I was like, is this a virus? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, you had to open the document first, so maybe. That's true. Uh, but yes, uh, I mean, it's kind of cool. I just don't understand how Fortnite's ever a balance game that makes sense. But like, because they just seem to chuck things out and be like, work I think it out. The fun is it, it isn't. Yeah. You can swim. So the same Everyone's swinging mode. now. You can slide. Everybody Pro- swing, can swim. First person mode, swim. I don't fucking know. Sw- go I fishing. assume, wait, can you play as the rock or is the rock a character in the game? I don't know if you can play as him. I believe he's just a car- Like, he's one of the main Fortnite characters now. Like, an actual character. One of the few characters. Like, I don't think you can play as Ant- Agent Jones, right? No, I don't believe so either. So, I mean, I'm sure That's they'll... stupid. Yeah, I don't know. Because everybody wants to play as the rock. It's true. And then we wait till, you know, we get Vin Diesel in the game. They'll just leave him as that character unplayable, and then they'll probably add, like, the Jungle Book or whatever, The Rock, as a playable thing. Because Fortnite's meta as fuck. Jungle, jungle get Cruise? Jungle Cru- no, Jungle Book. No, Jungle... Jungle Cruise Jumanji. was the movie Sorry, he was Jumanji, in. Jumanji, or whatever. <laughs> what, <laughs> a, what are these J things? <laughs> no, no. He's in the Jungle Book. He... he He's in the uh, He's Baloo. sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sequel to the live action uh, Disney film. Gotta believe. Um, no, yeah, it's Fortnite, cool. Um, play that, swing in if you want to. Download it, it's free, I guess. Uh, Media Molecule just released a huge new update for Dreams, which push square. It's targeting both sides of the game, playing creation. Of course, we talked about this briefly, but the full thing's dropped. So with version number 2.35, the studio is introducing a major new feature to Dream Shaping. The party experience where you create things, but it's also releasing original games developed in house for fans to play. Let's start with updates. Dream shaping. After installing the last update, you'll be able to access special templates. Say you want to make a 2D platform in Dreams, but have no idea how to build one from scratch. With the 2D platformer template, most of the hard work is already done. You simply follow the steps to complete the basic game, and then you continue working on it from there. There are templates for 2D platformers and arcade shooters, mini golf, 3D platformers, dungeon crawlers, and ancient dangers, which we'll get to shortly. The idea is that a new creator won't have to start from a total blank canvas, instead jumping into one of these templates, following the tutorial to introduce some basic concept, and then taking what they've made and putting their stamp on it. It looks like a really neat way of bridging the gap between playing games and dreams and making them, which can be a daunting process if new. So yeah, stopping on this first, I didn't know this was part of the update. Obviously, the stuff they talked about mostly was the, the game stuff, which we'll get to in a second. But this is really cool. I think this is probably something that should have been there from the get-go. But um, yeah, obviously, like looking at screenshots and videos and the quick squeeze of the video I had for it, uh, definitely seems like it would make the prospect of playing... like. I would say you still need to have completed the basic tutorials just to understand how to move stuff about or whatever. Yep. However, it uh, it is l- way less daunting than literally saying new and then it is nothing. Like you have, mm, you you know, like you're like, I want to make a platformer, new new canvas, nothing, blank. What do I do? You know, so at least with this, you have a sort of thing and then I guess you can add your spin by at least like, doing things different colors or changing th- things here and there. Like, you can make it super basic. I'm sure people will go hardcore and make this template into something that doesn't look anything like the template, and then there'll be a few games around which are very obviously just versions of this template, which, yeah, that's fine too. But, yeah, definitely really cool. Yeah. 
And then Ancient Dangers, a bat's tale, announced earlier this year as an MM original. This is a media molecule developed action game playable in single player or local co op, playing as a pair of orcs on a quest to stop their grandmother from snoring. It's a hack and slash adventure about battling beasties and helping out a little bat named Herb. It looks pretty wonderful and is apparently the largest game largest game the studio has released within Dreams, so it should be well worth checking out. Not only is Ancient Dangers a fully playable game in itself, it also serves as a template within the creation mode. You'll be able to use the same assets the team did to build your own orc-based excursions. It's the most complex of the templates, but after playing a bat's tail through, you might be inspired to tinker with it and come up with something new. Uh, so yeah, I definitely want to find the time to jump into this. Just it's a bit busy at the moment. Um, obviously, if you're listening to this now, uh, like I had, had my, uh, it's blasphemous, but I had Halo review going up. Um, so, you know, I've had, yeah, I know, right? So I haven't had time to jump into this, but I definitely do want to jump into this. It's a pity it doesn't have online co-op still, like this is just something that I have in the game or else we could just do it together. But, um, yep. I still want to play it because it definitely does look cool and impressive and, uh, knowing how well the single player, what was the main dream thing called? I can't even remember at this stage, but. Arts Tale? Arts Tale, that's it. Dream? Yeah. Arts Dream or Tale, whatever. Yeah, it's definitely Arts something. Um, but you know, that was really, really cool. And playing through that, you're like, wow, what you can do in dreams is crazy. And the, that was like, like in general, that was like a really fun experience to play through. So, um, yeah, I definitely want to play this. Would you, do you want to play this still or? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, this was, uh, as good excuse as any to jump back into dreams, maybe bounce around a couple other different mm-hmm. things. I think this is obviously really helpful in keeping like the, the games, the the dreams like Dream ecosystem verse? alive, I guess to a certain degree. I know it's very sustainable, but mm. um, you know, for people who maybe drop off and that kind of thing, like something like this, drags them back in, kicking and screaming, uh, to see what people are up to in the game and that kind of thing. So, yeah, well, it's very easy once you turn it on to get stuck dream surfing, but I guess it's just the turning that game specifically on and like opening yeah. games. So. Um, VG247 writes, The Matrix Awakens is an Unreal Engine 5 experience coming to PS5, according to Leak. Uh, some sort of tie-in between the Matrix, Matrix Resurrections and Unreal Engine 5 is coming to PS5. It's called The Matrix Awakens. This is according to Reddit user the underscore Andrew, who posted the information on Gaming Leaks and Rumors subreddit. The image post was apparently made available on the PSN backend. No details were included, only that it mentions PS5. Unreal Engine 5 was revealed back in May 2020, and while still in early access, there are a few projects conferred to be using the tech. Many feel this Matrix tie-in could be something akin to Epic's collaboration with Radiohead for Kid Amnesia, although that particular experience was built using Unreal Engine 4. While neither Sony nor Epic Games have responded to the leak, it's quite possible something could be announced next week during the Game Awards, Game Awards on December 9th, so yeah, this coming Friday when you're listening to this. Uh, I'm going to say this is real... Uh, PSN leak of the art seems legit. Uh, whether it's a, fr- I would assume it's a free thing that maybe takes half an hour to play through or something like that. Obviously, a time to promote yep. the movie. Uh, Shadow drops Friday ahead of the movie's release this coming Boxing Day makes perfect sense to me. Keanu is there as a presenter, I presume. I don't know if that's been announced, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I think it's been announced. It's been announced. Okay, so then yeah, so he comes out, he presents something. And then he announces this, or vice versa, or whatever. But, but yeah, I'm saying this is a hundred percent a thing. It's going to be out this Friday. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I don't know exactly what it will be. It could, they've got a bunch of different uh, interesting avenues. I guess something that acts as like a prelude to an actual movie would be cool. But also, it's like, do I want it to be that, <laughs> or do I want to go into the movie blind without anything else? Or it could be like could be like some sort of recap video it could just be like a like, tech demo recapping type be, thing listen where... explain to me the events of the matrix online game so i understand yeah, is that still canon lana i don't know <laughs> you want to tell me <laughs> is morpheus apparently dead <laughs> i don't know what the... is that what's going on is the matrix online? is enter the matrix the only one that's actually canon man imagine if they made like a sequel that, man i'll I tell yeah. you what, that's what I want. Enter the Matrix too. I want Enter the Matrix too. That's what I want. That game was the shit. Tie that in. Bring back Jada Pinkett Smith and Old Boy, whatever his name was. I don't even know. 
Ghost. Was his name Ghost? Not the actor, but the character. The character? Okay, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith and Ghost. What, what was Jada Pinkett Smith's character? Noby. Noby, that's right, yeah. Cool. Didn't totally just want Hulk for you, but that's fine. Hey, uh, hey Dylan, do you, do you want to list, do you feel like you need to catch up on these Matrix films? I before? do feel like I need to catch up on these Matrix films ahead of their release on December 26th, aka Boxing Day here in Australia. Well, starting this Thursday, over on What Do You Want to Watch, we're doing The Road to the Matrix Resurrections uh, with uh, Tech My Train's Simon Blackburn. So you can check that out over there. Starting Thursday, coming out every Thursday, uh, we cover the first three films, obviously. Boom, and then we'll be back talking about the Matrix Resurrections. What a segue. What a segue. Yeah. Also, talking about the Game Awards. I'm not talking about the drama, but if you want to hear us talk about everything that's revealed, trailers and all that sort of thing in the show, uh, tune into Arcade Couch. This, I presume, it will drop probably on Saturday uh, as soon as we get it recorded, edited, whatever. Anyway, probably Saturday after the show's Friday. If you want to hear our thoughts, that's where you want to be. And if Matrix is whatever... This thing I've already closed the web about Awakens. Awakens is revealed there. That's where we'll be talking about it. Maybe I've played already, maybe I haven't. I don't know. Probably not, to be honest. Uh Push Square writes, Gran Turismo 7 Dazzles with unedited Deep Forest Raceway gameplay. So yeah, there's some new gameplay uh, Gran Turismo out if you want to check it out. It's on the official PlayStation channel. Uh Push Square does write, Rolling Start. Here's a look at some unedited PlayStation 5 gameplay for um up, bleh, from the upcoming Gran Turismo 7, showcasing the returning Deep Forest Raceway. Fans of the franchise will know this has been a mainstay in all numbered entries of Polyphony's digi- Polyphony Pol- Polyphony Polyphony. I've never had to say the name. I don't think maybe I have. Simulation series, meaning it was conspicuously consecu- absent in Gran Turismo Sport. There have been some alterations to the track for the latest game, including the addition of a hairpin bend towards the end of the circuit. However, much of the route remains intact, including its tunnel sections, which will likely be etched into the memories of series veterans. You can compare how far the franchise's visuals have come with the footage from the PS1 game, uh, which I did. So when I was grabbing this article before, I watched this back and I was like, wow, I feel like I'm 10 again. Because that, that was one of the ones, one and one and two of the the ones where I was, two especially, that's where I spent a lot of time. Uh, the lighting, as is always the case with Polyphony Digital Games, is absolutely extraordinary. And we actually think it'll look better on HDR screen. As YouTube appears, have washed out the colors. Spoilers! YouTube washes out the colors on everything. If you want to watch a trailer in the best way possible on your fancy 4K television, go find that motherfucking trailer on... Uh, what the fuck's it called? V- Vimeo? Vimeo. Yeah, how do you say it? V- is that how you say it? Vimini? Vimeo. Vimeo. I've never had to say that out loud either. Uh, go find wow. it on there if they actually upload the trailer, because some people don't, obviously, and you have to watch it on YouTube. But the... Good companies do, and they look way better than the YouTube ones, which are compressed to fuckery. So, there you go. Again, this is why I don't care about the high-end stuff, because, you know, you ruin everything below. It's like it's like when you get used to eating a certain quality of something, you can't eat anything worse than it, you know? That's not a good, that's not a good excuse. That's a, that's a great analogy. No, that's a terrible analogy. That's not a good excuse at all. Yeah, that's great. So you're saying you don't want the best because then you'll have Because then you'll only want the best. Anything else will look like garbage, apparently. Well, it does look like garbage. I mean, it's not really a spoiler. Fine. <laughs> does it do? I mean, does it, does it look fine? But it's I mean, fine. It all looks the same. But I mean, seriously, for those who are paying, who, who want to know and who do care about stuff, the way stuff looks, if you haven't heard that before, Get off YouTube when you watch the trailers. I mean, they look fine, but they are compressed to fuckery. Vim- Vimeo, yeah. or however you say Just it. stick to Twitter on your phone. That's absolutely disgusting. Shout out to the people I know who watch Dune on their phones, illegally downloading it. Make me fucking sick. Um, what a movie, too. Go listen to our podcast for that. Still thinking about it. Love it. Uh, PlayStation is. Apparently, this is a big story for the week. PlayStation is apparently working on Xbox Game Pass competitor that will include PS1, PS2, PS3, PSP games. Right, it's press start. We've all been waiting to see what PlayStation's move will be to combat Xbox Game Pass, and it looks like we now have our first details, courtesy of Bloomberg. The outlet is reporting that Sony is working on a new subscription service, which is currently codenamed Spartacus. It'll merge PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now and reportedly include three tiers. The first tier would be similar to what PlayStation Plus is now offering a few uh, with a free, few free monthly games. 
with the second tier offering a large catalog of PS4 and PS5 games, presumably expanding on the PlayStation Plus collection. The third tier will include the previously mentioned inc- inclusions as well as a library of PS1, PS2, PS3, and PSP games, as well as extended demos and game streaming. The new service will reportedly be, be available on the PS4 and PS5 and release in autumn 2022. As expected, it will not feature Sony's AAA first-party offerings at launch, so don't expect the likes of Horizon Forbidden West or Gran Turismo 7 to be there when they launch next year. Hopefully, we'll actually see what this new service will launch in Australia, and it makes sense as to see why PlayStation Now will roll out with being so slow, if indeed Sony is working on a brand new service. What are your thoughts on this whole PlayStation Now, uh, no, Xbox Game Pass wannabe thing, or whatever we're calling it? Would you, uh, well, okay, so, so, would you, would you upgrade? So you're on tier one in, the, in this new world. You would be tier one currently. Would you want to go to tier two or three, or would you be just wanting to stay on one? Is the thing, I guess. Um, I don't know. It depends on the catalog that they have day one. Mm. Like maybe I would dabble depending on the month. It's like could I just you know for a couple of months go up to tier three? I assume so. Yeah. Get my, get my feel of like PSP games, and then be like, no, nah, I'm good. Mm. The next uh, God of War is about to come out. I'm not going to be playing any of these. Let's drop back down. Mm-hmm. I presume it'll be cheaper to subscribe mm. for 12 months if you're going to use it for like mm. at least a f- chunk of that time, I guess. I presume. Yeah. Um, I would have, so my, my big asterisk on the, the third, the big streaming thing with the PS1, 2, 3, and PSP games. Want to guess what my big asterisk is if I care about these? I don't know. What? Really? Yeah, surely. You really can't guess. Yeah. Do they have fucking trophies, Ash? Do they have goddamn trophies? That's a good point. I should have thought <laughs> of that. I apologize. If the PS One games, PS Two games, PS Three games, and the PSP games have trophies, then yes, it's worth it. If it's not trash, get the fuck out of here. Don't hear about it. <laughs> I'm playing these games again. I have no reason. Get the hell out. And they should do because the fucking. I mean. From one point of view, maybe they should not have trophies because, Why? you know, then people would be dragged down the hole. Like, you'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm playing through this PS1 game to get all the trophies and then, you know, yes, won't play anything else. No. What will happen is I'll say on this podcast now that I need trophies to play these and then the service will roll around and I'll go, man, look at all these cool games of trophies. I can't get, wait to get Platinum and X game. And then what will happen realistically is I do not get it because I have other shit to do. Yeah, that's, true. that's the most maybe like, realistic answer. So maybe they shouldn't put trophies in there, so you won't be disappointed about not going back and playing. The I, game I, to I need, trophies. I need them in there. Just so I know, you know. Especially the PSP I mean, it's games. Weird. See, yeah, I mean, all those games, well, like PS One, PS Two, PSP didn't have trophies at all. So, unlike you know Xbox, I assume they had achievements from day one. So, mm. so it's easy to go back and like put. Just carry over the achievements through their back catalog. The problem is, is and this is the thing they'll say. They'll be like, "Well, look, the developers do the trophies and you know all that sort of stuff." I don't give a fuck, Sony. Right? You, are so- someone's job. All right, hire me. I'll do it on the side. It's fine. You're paying money for these. Get them to do a little bit extra work. Just do a little, work. do a fucking trophy list. It, uh, uh, it's not that hard, honestly. I just don't see why it's, it should be that hard. Um. But I mean, overall, this sounds good. Obviously, the big thing is price. How much is each tier? Do we feel like it'll look it'll be worthwhile when we're looking at it? It's very hard to say now because we don't see the full list of games that are included in the extended PlayStation Plus collection in the extension of PS One to PSP games. Yeah. If we look at those and we see the prices when it's announced and we see what's included, then we'll be able to say for sure if it's worth it or not. Uh, I don't feel like this is a Game Pass competitor. Game Pass is still going to attract a no. completely different sort of audience, which is fine. However, I do feel like it's a it's a good step in the right direction for pl- PlayStation to have something as close to without trying to directly just copy. I mean, it's rebranded PlayStation Now, really. Hmm. It's like, PlayStation Now, did you forget that you could download the games onto your console? It wasn't just streaming them? Oh, 
Well, now you've got a new service. So you, you don't get confused and you definitely know you can download the games. Mm. Uh, so you should definitely buy, uh, subscribe. And it makes yeah, sense I'm for like, them not to have the AAA Sony stuff on their yeah, day one. Yeah, because, you know, they don't want to devalue their games like Xbox does. Well, they don't need to. Worthless. Sony's games, Sony's games still sell like hotcakes when they launch. Because they're good. Well, I mean, you're true. So. Consistently good. Yeah. People are happy to pay top dollar for them, and that's what Sony's built its business around. So Xbox is building their business around Game Pass. Sony's building theirs around AAA mega titles that people will buy their console to play. So, yeah. Xbox. We had an update yeah. on like the console sales. Do you know recently? Um, there was something, and I completely forgot. That, but I swear there was something posted a week ago. Maybe I'll find it next time. But yeah. pretty sure PlayStation's winning right. PlayStation was winning. Good. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody needs to buy an Xbox. Just go play all Game Pass games on the Xbox. No, but they'll run bad. Still play them. Though. I mean, technically. Yeah. Um, and lastly, this was a weird thing that happened last week in Australia, but let's just go for it. So, uh, well played, Zach Jackson writes, PlayStation to plate offers players a taste of PlayStation-themed Tucker. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. So, titled PlayStation to Plate, the campaign sees PlayStation Australia collaborate with three renowned Australian restaurants to bring free delicious food items to life. The restaurants were involved were Mary's in New South Wales, Bistro Morgan, Windsor, Victoria, and Italian Bowl, Newtown, New South Wales. For a limited time, people can pop in store or order online via delivery do to try out these dishes. You can see each dish in detail and read about the inspiration behind it below. So, uh, I don't know. Let's just go for it and let's rate if you would actually get this or not. Or, or the overall look or whatever. Let's see how you go. Or thematically, if it makes sense. Because we did not get sent any of this shit. It's, it's just uh, uh, absolute, number one PlayStation podcast. Well, well, Send me the food. All right. Uh, well, Dylan, they're only, it's only available in Sydney and Melbourne. So I appreciate PlayStation sticking to their guns and bit treating this like the PS5 and making it almost impossible to get for certain people in the elites. Love that. Hate that, actually. Um, number it's one. Cool. Ellie's Steak Sandwich, Restaurant Mary's, titled Last of Us Part 2. Uh, so I'll just scrum through this. From The Last of Us Part 2, Ellie's Steak Sandwich will be available from legendary Sydney Burger Institution Mary's. Ellie's Steak Sandwich appears near the start of The Last of Us Part 2 and has been recreated by fans around the world online in blogs and recipe videos. Mary's co-founders Kenny Graham and Jake Smith said that the establishment in which the famed sandwich appears in The Last of Us Part 2 resembles a lot of what Mary stands for, a safe harbour away from the outside world for anyone and everyone. What do you rate this Ellie's Steak Sandwich as, I guess, theme? You've got you to rate it on theme, relation to the game, visual appeal, and then assuming it tastes all right, just pretend you're eating it and give me a score out of five. <laughs> I mean, it looks good from this graphic. I mean, it, I don't recall the steak sandwich in the game. Obviously, it's not a prominent thing. I would argue that this is not a sandwich, Mary. <laughs> this is steak in a roll. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. I mean, a sandwich is two, is two, two bits of things. Two pieces of bread. Two pieces of bread, right? Yeah. I'm giving this two out of five. Yeah, I'm going to give it the same. I'm giving it two. You know, based on our visual look and... I didn't like the way it tasted. Definitely not on any taste. <laughs> no, nah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going over the fact I can't remember this in the game at all without having to be told it's from the game and just believing it's from the game. And then visually, it does. This isn't a sandwich. I, this to me looks like some. It looks like a hot dog bun where someone's stolen the hot dog on me. So I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah, someone's giving you a hot dog with no hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking disappointing. It's some steak. I mean, yeah. I'd still eat it. I mean, it sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this it's just not a sandwich. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's just a. Dogless hot dog. I don't know if that's hot take. <laughs> two out of ten. Hot dog take. Hot dog take. Dish two. Sarangian honey mousse. Is that how we say it? Sarang- Sarangian? Uh, Restro Bistro Morgan. Title. The Rasmus. Was- uh, sorry. <laughs> Ratchet Clack Rift Apart. Ratchet Clack's colorful interdimensional world is being brought to life by Melbourne's Bistro, Mis- there, Bistro Morgan. Morgan Hipworth started his bakery in Melbourne when he was just 13. Today, Bistro Morgan is one of Melbourne's best-known bakeries and a must-visit for any foodie. PlayStation Australia has collaborated with Morgan to recreate Chef Tulio's Serangian Honey Mousse from Ratchet & Clank A Rift Apart. Um, 
So it's a jar with uh, different colors and everything like that. I'm gonna I'm giving this three and a half. I don't recall this from the game either. However, I don't know if she, we actually got to see food by her. I remember her as a character just looking it up. It was like the on the yeah. I don't, unless she maybe zoomed in there planet. somewhere or something. I don't know. But. She was wearing like a chef hat, but other than mm. that, I remember. Oh no! Like you do get you do the mission where you get the honey, right? That's true, actually. You're, yeah, I don't think you ever see you see the, the finished though. product. Though. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. So I, I'll start with. I remember the character. I remember where they're at least drawing this from, even though I don't recall seeing the food. But maybe we never did. Is what we kind of do. However, I do recall the character. I do understand where this is coming from in the game. Um, visually, it looks interesting. It looks like some uh, yummy thing. So yeah, I'm going. I'm going three and a half on this one. This one looks like something I'd both want to keep on my shelf and eat at the same time. So I'm going three and a half, and it tastes tastes good too. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for for just for look. I think it, mm. it looks really good. Uh, nice jar, nice graphics. Uh, you know, got that ratchet look, but also got the honey look, yeah, and the nice like split of the the colors. Mm. So the green and the strawberry cream, and then the strawberry base. I don't know. <laughs> they they're not giving any ingredients away, so we can't recreate these. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that looks. Looks good. I don't know if you'd want to keep it on your shelf because I It'd probably go bad. That would, probably go bad. It would go bad. Yeah. It would like turn. Yeah. Curdle. What if I had my Xbox fridge? <laughs> <laughs> um, this three. I'm pretty sure it just blow up. I guess. Yeah. yeah just a red ring of death on the fridge. This three. Thief's Pasta Restaurant. The Italian Bowl. Title: Uncharted for a Thief's End. New Towns. The Italian Brewer has brought the pasta. From Uncharted 4, A Thief's End to Life. And what is perhaps the best example of how we bond over food, at the beginning of the game, we see Nate and Elena having dinner together after a long day and discussing each other's days and future plans. It's an intimate and relatable moment, as well as a window into these characters' relationship. So it is literally a bowl of pasta. There's no real special trick about it. Um, and I can't recall, if you'd asked me what food they eat in that scene, I would have said, I don't know. But I do recall them eating, obviously. Like, I remember them having a scene where they're eating food. So, good point to that. But but there's nothing, like, stand out to here that screams are charted. So, I'm, I'm going to go two and a half. I'll just go two and a half. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the scene right now, and they are definitely eating pasta. And it's definitely, you know, they've, got, they've gone with the... Uh Right type of pasta, the the I don't know what to call it, the penne. Mm. Uh, no. I mean it's fine. I mean it's a bowl of pasta. So I don't, it's not super impressive or anything. It's just it's a bowl uh, of pasta. I'm pretty sure, it's like a, it's a bowl of pasta. I'm, I think most people, most people have bowls of pasta like it's most days, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Me, I have it for yeah. breakfast. Every could have upped it a little bit. Yeah. So two and a half seems fair. Yeah. Two and a half. Uh, so what we're saying is, uh, you know, our opinions on these would have been higher if we'd been given case case tests. But we're still talking about it, you know. So who's the real winner? So I yeah. guess yeah, they win anyway. <laughs> you know, fuck, fuck, that's not not Sydney siders, am I right? Yeah. Just go oh, going around here, not spreading coronavirus all year. Don't get anything. People sure. in Sydney getting all their coronavirus can't even taste the food they get given. One thing to pick on Tasmanians, but to pick on Queenslanders and exclude you as well, I think it's bullshit. A, I think it's just disgraceful. Bullshit. I understand. I'm used to being left out. I mean, yeah, we know. <laughs> Tasmanian. <laughs> Tasmanian's not part of Australia. So, anyway. <laughs> I mean, you've got more of a chance of like getting a, someone, some crazy person on Uber. It's like swimming it over. <laughs> no, it's very expensive. It's a robot. Yeah. Very expensive, expensive Uber Eats, I think that. Um, put it on a. You know, they could just stick it in a bottle and then like, we have to see, and you've got a better chance of getting it. <laughs> I don't think I do. <laughs> I think you would have a better chance of getting it. Fucking driven up from New South Wales or something. I don't know. Um, all right, that'll do it for this week's episode of Platinum Explosion. Let us know any comments, questions, or concerns you have, and how you would rate each of the plates of food. Uh, Did especially you eat the food? especially Let if you've know. tried it, yeah, order it. Some of you live in Victoria, New South Wales. 
if you're not ordering the food and you're wasting your opportunity to have this stuff when we can't try it, that's actually disrespectful, yeah. I feel, to us. You know, I feel like that's super disrespectful. It is very disrespectful when you think mm. about it. The, like the two biggest PlayStation podcasts in Australia mm. and probably not going to be able to try this. Thing. So they have to go now to Geelong, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's in Victoria. <laughs> can't you order it? You know, one He's of in these, Melbourne. One of these like are in CBD. Victoria. I don't know. Like, yeah, five hundred dollar Uber is, is a lot better than paying for Spirit of Tasmania. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, put it down, Ryan. Ryan, you better go drive. You better get this. You better get this, as you're fucking disrespecting us. All right, stop dissing us. Yeah, where the hills? Um, you can find us on Twitter by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. Join our Discord, explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. If you like this episode, you thought it was worth a dollar, head on over to exp- Kofi page, explosionnetwork.com slash support. Um, if you'd like to donate uh, $5,000 so I can Uber eat one of these meals, that would be much appreciated. Fly to um, Sydney, Uber eats the meals. Fly to, yeah, p- donate. Here's as long as they're, they're done for dairy, right? Yeah, man, I can leave the state in about 10 days. I believe the border's open, so I can get, as long as the meal's still available in, uh, in around mid-December, I'm good to go. So just donate your money. I'll use it to good use, which is literally to fly somewhere for like a 10 second but, but, meal. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, the steak sandwich looks like it's got cheese on it. Yeah, I, I can eat the, the honey thing. Looks like it's got some sort of cream in the middle. The mousse is the guy, I think. The mousse looks like it's got some sort of cream in it. All right. So what what you're saying is, I'm going to fly somewhere, really expensive flight. I'm going to fly somewhere just to eat something. That I'm going to spend the rest of my trip shitting out horribly in the hotel room. I'm then going to fly back and say, that was well worth all the money. Thank you so much. <laughs> I had a great fucking time. <laughs> Thank you so much. How yep, was the so food? What, what we're it was really horrible. Saying. It hurt. <laughs> well, is For there context, a, play- is there a PlayStation game that... Uh, <laughs> like Tosa Tolerance. Is there a PlayStation game franchise in which you can make a meal that respects people with lactose intolerances? Astrobot. I don't eat food. So what? It's just a plate of nothing? <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Either. Thank you for listening to this episode. Remember, every trophy counts. Hey, don't forget you can subscribe to the show wherever you're currently listening, and you can drop a review if you can. Find more great shows like this and more content over at ExplosionNetwork.com and please consider supporting us for as little as a dollar over on our Ko-fi page by heading to ExplosionNetwork.com slash support. Thanks for listening.